Recently, I decided to try out an LED lighting project by the King of DIY, but I wanted to make it a little bit simpler based on a comment I saw that Justin Batzer had left on the King of DIY's original project. So now I'll show you the steps that I took to complete the project and give you some pros and cons of the way that I did it. Started out with the old fixture, a roll of LED lights, a power adapter for the LED lights, and some foil tape. I then had to drill a hole in the side of the fixture to admit the adapter. As you can see, it took me a few tries to get the hole big enough. Finally, it fit. Then it was time to start working with the LED light strip itself. Along the length of the light strip, there are certain designated spots every two inches or so where you can cut it without damaging it or its waterproof properties. The entire light strip is also adhesive. You just remove the protective backing and stick it to whatever you want. One end of the light strip came pre-wired to this adapter that allowed it to be plugged into a power supply. In the kit that I purchased, there were also enough spare parts to allow me to attach one more piece of light strip to a power supply. It wasn't too difficult, but I did have to strip a couple of wires. Before I went too far, I wanted to test and make sure that the LED lighting did indeed light up. Once I had determined that the light strip was indeed functional, I tried to figure out the best way to attach it to the old fluorescent bulb. I figured that a good way to get the LED light strip to coil evenly around the fluorescent bulb would be to do a little figuring. So after a little math, I marked every half inch off on the bulb. After wrapping the LED light strip around the bulb without the adhesive backing removed, I went ahead and began wrapping it around the bulb, sticking it in place this time. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the left side of the bulb didn't get as nearly even or as tight a coverage as it did on along the rest of the bulb. I must have made a miscalculation somewhere, but I had gotten this far and I decided just to go ahead and see what it looked like when I lit it up. And it turns out that even though it wasn't entirely even, it was pretty bright. So I was encouraged by that and decided to go ahead and back the inside of the reflector with the aluminum tape. This step was a little bit more involved and time consuming than you might think, because removing the backing from the tape without getting the tape stuck to itself and ruined was a little more difficult than it might appear, but it didn't take me long to do it. It doesn't look perfect, but it'll do exactly what I need it to do, and that's just reflect more of the light back into the tank. And then of course, it was time to put the bulb with the LED strip on it back in and test out how the reflective tape had influenced the brightness of the light. Not bad. There was no need for the cord to the old fluorescent fixture, so I took a pair of wire cutters and snipped that off. And now for the moment of truth, testing it on the tank. I feel like this light does exactly what I want it to do. It's not extremely bright, but since I'm not growing anything but one small Anubias plant in the tank, it's fine. I really am more concerned about seeing the fish and being able to film them effectively. So in short, I'm satisfied with this lighting fixture. The advantages of this light are that it requires very little energy, should be long lasting, was inexpensive and fairly easy to put together. I can really think of only two disadvantages to this lighting solution. One is that the light that it produces is not extremely bright, so only plants tolerant of low light, such as Anubias or Java Fern, are really suitable for a tank with this kind of light. And second, this fixture is probably not as durable as the original one that Joey, the king of DIY, demonstrated on his uh, video. And that's because Joey used PVC pipe as a framework for the LED strips, while I'm just using the old glass fluorescent bulb. But with careful handling, I anticipate that this lighting solution should last as long as the LED strip itself. With any luck, quite a few years. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday, all related to keeping aquarium and vivarium pets. You're most welcome to leave a comment and a like. And for those of you who are waiting for an animal voiceover at the end, subscribe.